everybody. Today I would like to talk to you about cognitivism. Now, cognitivism is a learning theory that first came about in the 1960s, um, and it served as an alternate to behaviorism. Uh, now, cognitivism focuses on the internal mental activities and regards the mind almost like a black box you would find in an airplane. Cognitivism asserts that the human mind is an information processor, kind of like a computer, and that a child's memory, problem solving, and thinking need to be opened and explored. Essentially, cognitivism focuses not so much on what the student can do, but focuses more on what the student actually knows and how they came about learning that information. So how did it even come about? Well, it all begins with an old Swiss gentleman named Jean Piaget. Now, Piaget believed everyone is born with a certain amount of innate knowledge. For example, babies know how to cry, they know how to suck their thumbs, they know how to do all these things without even being taught how to. Piaget also believed people learn through a series of stages in which they go from knowing essentially nothing aside from that innate knowledge to being rational beings with the ability to solve problems and think critically. According to Piaget, a human being's knowledge about any given subject is organized into what is called a schema, and learning is truly achieved only when changes are made to the schema. Thus, if you've ever forgotten something, you must not have truly learned it in the first place. In addition to Piaget, Russian psychologist Lev Vygotsky believed human cognition could only be understood if social interactions and culture were taken into account. Vygotsky developed what we now know as a social learning theory, which states that learning depends heavily on one's interactions with the environment. According to Vygotsky, learning is most effectively achieved when students are guided through the learning process in a systematic way, which he called scaffolding. Through scaffolding, a mentor or more knowledgeable other demonstrates a skill or activity, then steps back and allows the student to perform the activity with guidance if needed. Eventually, the students become more proficient at the task, and the teacher slowly removes the scaffolding. Now, cognitivism opposes behaviorism in that people are not programmed merely to respond to a stimuli. People are rational beings that require active involvement in the world around them in order to learn, and action is a direct consequence of thinking. Cognitivists do observe learner behavior, but only in an effort to ascertain what is actually going on inside the learner's mind. So, what does this mean for teachers? What does cognitivism look like in the classroom? Well, for starters, teachers should be sure to ask plenty of higher-level questions that encourage critical thinking. Also, in the cognitive classroom, teachers are leaders and not bosses. The primary role of the teacher is to transfer knowledge to the students in an effective and organized manner. Cognitivist teachers understand that each student brings a different level of knowledge to the classroom, and tapping into that prior knowledge is the key to finding the most effective teaching strategies. Students should realize there is really no end to their learning. Teachers should constantly be introducing new concepts that encourage students to rethink or even redefine what they think they already know. Students should be encouraged to learn from each other, and teachers should focus more on the learning process rather than the outcome. As a teacher, you should present opportunities for students to learn and advance to the next developmental stage. This may be achieved through guided practice or even through puzzles, sorting games, and flashcards. Now, one of the most fundamental aspects of cognitivism is that students form their own education. They form their own learning through interaction with the world around them. Therefore, field trips and real-world experiences are a must. Take them to see plays. Have them act out skits. Do science experiments. Take them to observe plants and animals. Encourage students to keep receipts for items they purchase so they can see what taxes, pricing, and budgeting is all about. Don't give them the answers, but instead guide them through the process of discovering the answers on their own. Cognitivism is all about processing information from the world by exploring, experimenting, and actively participating in it.